Hello, hi friends. Good morning and happy new year to all of you. And today I'm going to start up with another series of lecture. And in this video, I'm going to discuss about few important questions from each neat MDS point of view from the conservative dentistry. So this is the part one of this lecture series. So let's begin with our lecture today. So the question number one is the tooth preparation that relates to all of the following restorations may be considered as conventional preparation except up for so you all must have understood the question that we need to separate out the preparation which is not the conventional forms so the option being the number one is amalgam number two is composite number three is gold and the number four is ceramic so if we see out of these options and if we look into our uh, conservative dentistry knowledge the amalgam the gold and the ceramic these may be considered as the conventional preparations these are the conventional preparation since we require the specific wall forms the specific depth the specific marginal forms and things like that because of the uh, properties of such material so these are said to be the conventional preparation so the options which are we are left with is that is the composite so the answer is composite so the tooth preparation for the restorations of the composite they have less need for specific depth wall marginal form so that's why the composite that's why the composite that is said to be the modified preparation so the answer to this question is the composite so the conventional preparation make the amalgam the gold and the ceramic and the modified preparation is the composite so let's move to our second mcq so the second one is usually a weak enamel margin it has a cavo surface angle of sorry it is enamel the options are less than 90 equal to 90 degrees more than 90 degrees and the last option is none of the above so let us see um, enamel margin is a uh, composed of rods the enamel margin composed of rods that don't run uninterrupted from the surface let's first of all draw a diagram and uh, <coughs> this is your enamel and then we have is a dentine and over here we have is a pulp horn and the uh, um, the pulpal canals so uh, enamel margin composed of rods that don't run uninterrupted from surface to the south dentine is the unsupported ones so the unsupported enamel margins they tend to split or fracture off and they leave a v-shaped ditch they're gonna leave a v-shaped ditch along the margin of the restoration so this weak enamel margin it has a cavo surface angle of 90 degrees so this is our answer that is less than 90 degrees so the option was less than 90 equal to 90 more than 90 and none of the above so the weak enamel margin because this has got the answer weak enamel margin it has got a large amount of the unsupported enamel rods so it has got a cavo surface angle of less than 90 degrees okay so this is the answer let's move on to the another mcq so um this is quite a 
easy but very important mcqs and this can come in your neat mds exam for sure so the phenomena of extension for the prevention it was first suggested by so if uh, someone has read the student went very nicely or it um, you know so he must be knowing he or she must be knowing answer for this question so let us see the options first of all gv black dr marshall ab student or the stockwell so the answer of this is you must have uh, you know guessed guys so let us see what's the answer so the answer to this question is the marshall lab so the phenomena of extension for prevention extension for prevention you all must be aware aware of this phenomena so uh, let me tell you the outline form for occlusal cavity is controlled by extend the cavity margin to the sound tooth structure and remove all the unsupported enamel this is one of the factor the another factor in this case is include all the susceptible fissures susceptible ones in the outline form so that is including the susceptible fissures in the outline form so this phenomena is the extension for prevention so this was first suggested by dr marshall ab so the answer to our mcq and later on it was adopted by dr gv black so do remember the first the phenomena was suggested by marshall ab if the question is like this but later on developed by the gv black so if we are not given the option marshall ab then the answer would be gv black otherwise it is was initially given by dr marshall ab so let's move on to our another question of the series that is according to the walker so remember this name the mean distance from the marginal ridge to the cej this is um you know quite a easy question but students you know find it difficult in the exam because they don't give you know much concentration to these values so these values are very much important from your neat mds point of view so the mean distance from the marginal ridge to the cemento enamel uh cemento enamel junction is uh you know we have to find the value for the premolars and the molars and the option given are 5 or 6 3 and 5 0.8 and 2 and 0.5 and 2 so uh guys the answer for this question is that is 5 mm for the premolars and 6 mm for the molars and this was suggested by do remember the name that is w h o c k e r mark this out and note this down in your uh, notebooks okay so 5 mm for pre molars 6 mm for the molar and uh, let us see uh, another important point i'm going to uh, tell you is that is the idle gingival extension idle gingival extension required is that is remember the values 4 mm with plus minus a uh, 2 mm okay as the range of variation so do remember this value as well okay so moving on to our another question and the last question of today's video uh that is the question is uh with the single application of the varnish of uh, with the single application of the varnish how much percentage of the wetting is achieved when we apply the varnish onto the tooth surface that is if we apply only one layer of the varnish how much wetting we get the answer uh, the options are 35 percentage 55 percent 60 to 75 85 to 90 so the answer is 55 percent sorry the answer is 55 percentage 
so let us see what is the cavity varnish so as you know the cavity varnish is a mixture of the copal resin and the organic solvent and on application when we apply its first layer the solvents they evaporate and they're gonna layer a resin layer over the dentine so this dentinal uh, layer this gonna this resin layer gonna seal the dentinal uh, tubules which gonna lead to better marginal adaptability especially with the silver amalgam okay so two coats of varnish they are sufficient because we know that the varnish is hydrophobic in nature remember that the varnish is hydrophobic in nature so with the single application 55 percentage of the wetting that is achieved and uh, another important value is uh, with the setting second application that is the two coats of varnish they will provide us with 85 to 90 percent of the wetting so that's why two layers of varnish they are applied to provide the necessary sealing onto the tooth surface okay so remember these values 55 percent and 85 to 90 percent <coughs> And the dentine bonding agents, they are also recognized as the dentine sealing agent and they can be used for the substitutes of the cavity varnish. So uh, guys, this was all uh, about our today's video. And I'll be coming up with the part 2 of this series where we're going to discuss a few more important questions from the conservative dentistry. So hope you have uh, liked our video. And uh, do mention in the comment section below uh, regarding your views about this video. And if you have any queries, do mention in the comment section below. I'll happy to solve your queries. And, for, and you can also email us at dentehub1018 at gmail.com. So till next time, take care, bye-bye and best of luck.